creator of Supreme Ambulite Rejection Screen Paint using Ambulite Rejection Technology Game. Today, crew boys are welcome. We're going to be doing an interesting demonstration today. So, in this demonstration, we're going to be doing uh, white levels, contrast levels, reds, blues, uh, greens, the whole nine yards, everything. Saying I'm having a problem with my network. Hold on for a minute. Let me go and put my uh, my Wi-Fi on so we can get that better. All right, so we're going to be doing everything. Blues, greens, reds, solid colors, uh, array of different colors, white levels, the whole nine yards, everything. Things that are usually not done that people don't do in their de demonstrations, we do it here. So, now I told you before I was going to come back and get a white surface. Because in a claim, when you're saying that in black technology, and we always state this already, that the white levels will be a tad low, but nothing's going to disrupt your picture quality. So... I've never seen this particular paint done against a white screen on white levels only. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Everything, a mix of everything. So already on the screen, as you can see, we got the lights in right here. Had an electrician come in today, well actually yesterday, and they repaired the lights right here. This one actually has some problems with it. So now it's up and going. And we're going to do this in a fully lit ambient light environment as it should be done. Uh, yesterday I kind of felt kind of bad about that demonstration because the, the room was dark, you know what I mean? All right, so let me come out of this right here because I'm playing a YouTube, some YouTube content that I shouldn't be playing. And this is what I mean by ambient light rejection technology. See how much light that I have in this environment right here? Let me show you my switches right here. See my switch? All the way up. I can sit right here and I can watch my screen, movies, TV, whatever I want. And a full environment. This is how technology is supposed to react. So now we got the lights fixed in here. This is fantastic. That one's going to be next. Got to do a little more work on that one. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to paint half of this with the UV, and the other half I'm not going to put my black. I'm not going to put <laughs> early in the morning, people. I'm not going to put my uh, black paint there yet. I'm going to paint it right down the middle. That's what we're going to do. But we're going to keep half of this white. And half of this with UV, all right? Because like I said, when I see a lot of these demonstrations, and keep in mind, we're going to take the high-end screens too, because it's no fun. If we can't put an elite screen against this, I mean, come on. That defeats the purpose of all the fun. Got the high-end sample sheets over there in the back. We got the lighter one, Seymour AV 1.3. We got all of them. So let me see where my stand's at. All right. <sighs> Later on, I'm going to take the gray screen outside, UV mix outside. We're going to do that demonstration against that new technology that took a direct hit from sunlight. And we'll see how well that screen stands against that screen on a direct hit from sunlight. So let's get set up here. All right, so what we're going to do is just going to paint half of the screen right here. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I don't want anybody thinking that, okay, you know, that could be something different he might have tampered with. No, we're going to take this and paint it. And then we're going to put this against this to show you they're both the same. Do things by the book here. Got myself a new roller today, too. Man, I feel fantastic. My other roller's kind of crappy. Let's get this open. Now, before we start this, let me show you what's going to happen before we start this demonstration. You see against my screen, we have the UV mix and a white sheet of paper. Now, as I stated many times before, that... No screen will ever beat the white level of a white screen. Virtually impossible because the screen is white. It's going to produce a higher white level. Gray screens are supposed to have higher white levels than a black screen. But as you can see, we can blend into the screens with no problem because the screen's producing a high enough white level to blend into a screen. So it's not going to blend to white screen too well when it comes to white levels because white screens produce high whites. But when it comes to colors and stuff, that's where the white screen is going to fail miserably. All right, so let's move our projector out of the way. And as you can see already from the door, we're matching the UV already from the door. So let me grab my cell phone so I can figure out where I put it at because I told you I have a bad habit of setting things in the wrong place. I ordered some stuff too, and upstairs I had the GameCube running. The GameCube came already. So that's running right now, playing Luigi's Mansion on it. So and right now, I'm thinking about instead of buying the Dreamcast, because man, they want so much money for a Dreamcast right now. Now you see that? Now you watch the screen change. Hey, Ken, what's going on? <laughs> Let's say, Ken, what's going on? Uh, hey, yeah, I guess that is gay, Ken. So if you notice already, we're already with the, with the Amazon is already, well, not Amazon, but the Chromecast is switching over 
because I've been installed too long. And as you can see already, it's already blending into a screen already that fast. And we haven't even put on a demonstration yet. So let's come over here, see if I can get my feedback to wherever that disappeared to. We can go from there. So let me see if I got everything back. Yeah, I got everything back. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with white. We're going to do a white screen first, okay? It's all white. Uh, screen saver is going to pop up. It's just going to show a great big shade of white. As I told you before, any screen coming side by side to a white screen is not going to be the past. White screens are the only screen that's going to produce 100% white levels. Now, in this case, if you look at our technology, if it was so dark, it'd be extremely dark. It'd be almost as dark as the border around the screen itself. All right. Now, I told you before, if the screen is generating too high of a white level, that is not a good sign. It's a bad sign. It means the screen basically is going to fade when it comes to colors. So we're going to put in red first. Now, you see what happened right there to the UB mix? It faded. You see what happened to the white screen? Not even there. Not even showing up, not even registering, no GPS, nothing else gone. This is what happens when you don't have ambient light technology the correct way. Because the screen is not only struggling to produce a proper color level, but the ambient light in the environment is disrupting the picture. Let's go swap over to blue. Same results, doing a tad better, but still, as you can see, the color is still faded. And the white screens, not picking up nothing at all, period. This is an eye opener for those of you that are still using white screens and white walls. You may want to stop doing that because you're not getting the most out of your projector. This is a, keep in mind, a projector I'm using in the demonstration is a 4,000 lumen Chrissy, okay? So if a white screen can't pick up on a 4,000 lumen Chrissy, yeah, you, it's time for you to get rid of that white screen. We're just moving that to the side because I don't want to look at any political stuff. All right, so there we are with green. So it does a little better with green. Like I said, still not getting that deep color. Now, I'm going to show you when to do the star field demonstration. I'll tell you one of the hardest demonstrations to pull up because it'll tell if the screen is pulling contrast or if it's pulling a shade of gray. And there you go. UV mix does not pull contrast. It reacts the exact same way as all the other screens we've tested, Dark Star 9, the Paxel screen, uh, the uh, Cinema Black. All those different screens have that same kind of color. Now, for, so, for someone came in the room and was saying something about gunmetal screens. Let me explain something to you. Gunmetal is a kind of bluish, kind of, um, kind of gray kind of uh, color. That's what gunmetal is. You've seen Robocop, that funny armor he has on. it got that kind of blue. That's gunmetal. That's the color of gunmetal. Somebody thought the golds were gunmetal. No, golds are not gunmetal. All right, so let's go over here. To be fair, let's grab one of our darker screens. Look, I can separate it. These are the two darkest screens that I have in the group, which will be the Dark Star 9. As you can see, very dark screen, right? Very, very dark screen, the Dark Star 9. And then we have the Paxel, if I'm saying that wrong or incorrect. This is how dark this screen is, okay? It's a very, very dark surface made by um, Daylight Screens. They make this screen right here, as you can see. All right. And if you notice in these demonstrations, I'm not slandering anybody. I'm not calling their stuff trash. I'm not calling it garbage. I'm not calling them this, that, and the other. I'm just showing you a simple demonstration on how it's supposed to be done when you test out projection screens. We test out these black screens, they have to go against other black screens or anything we could find close enough to a black screen. So usually just black house paint or black fabric or whatever we can get our hands on and we have to test the screen's white levels. All right, so here's the Dark Star 9, right here. It does not produce contrast. There's no screen that can actually come close to a black screen. It's virtually impossible. Like I said, when I showed you the white screen, the white the screensaver, no screen can come close to a white screen. Virtually impossible. All right, do this right here. All right, put them all together, as you can see. 
Black screens on each screen is producing contrast. Now we'll go back to those bright colors again. We'll hit red and see how they react to bright, straight colors. It's kind of interesting because this screen is really freaking dark. This screen is extremely dark, but look how they react. <laughs> Even the UV mix falls in the same category. Now, let's see if we pull up gray. Let's pull up the straight color gray. I had a, um, somebody who came in and made that comment to me. Thank you so much because I never forgot that I keep doing this gray demonstration because he said, why don't you bring up the color gray? I want to see what that looks like. Very good question. Very, very good question. So now we're bringing up gray. And mind you, these screens are gray. The image we're pulling up is dark gray, so you can see where it matches the screen. All right, we'll come out of here. Let's bring up, uh, let's see, we got a few more here. Okay, we're going to bring up the Sony um, contrast demonstration. This is a very dark, dark demonstration. If your screen doesn't pull black level, it will show. Interesting, isn't it? You would think the daylight screen would be to produce better color, but it doesn't. As I showed you in the demonstration, we first started off. That's why I showed you the solid colors first. The blues, the reds, the greens. So that way you can get an idea of what you're looking at. So instead of seeing a bunch of camouflage colors grace in the screen, you really don't see what colors are failing. That's why I show you the solid colors first. So then when you see that color fail, you go, oh, yeah, I see why. Because on the straight red, it just failed miserably. Yeah. Give you an idea. This is why majority of these screens have to be done in some form of ambulight controlled environment or they have to be done in the dark. In this environment right here, we have a ton of ambient light. If you look at my overhead light, you see how bright that thing is? That's why I couldn't wait for them to come in and fix that light because I need that light for demonstrations. I had the tech coming out here, to, um, the electrician said, wouldn't you want this area to be dark? I said, no, it ain't that kind of screen. Why well, it's important for me. I'm not going to show you. Like I said, when you see all those colors bouncing across the screen, we'll switch over here. I should have a video playing in here in the background, too, because that would be nice to have some fish or something in the background. You can see this screen while we revert to that screen. Let's see. Let's go over to my YouTube channel. All right. And let's bring up, let's see, something just something to just play in the background so I can just switch back and forth. Put some fish on but right now we'll switch over to here because this one's all ready to go we're going to rewind this one back all right we're going to come over here and get this one started on something else let me see what we got to do here all right we're just let that play in the background over there that's good all right that'll work that can play in the background over there while we work over here. All right, so let's go back to the very beginning so we can start off from scratch. Now, in this demonstration, the background is supposed to be always black. Don't worry, they'll get the, the flowers will flash across these screens. Now you see where the color is washed out right here, right here, definitely right there, right there. I'm really surprised with that right there. That's a $5,000 screen. That's a very, very, very expensive screen. Pause this for a minute. You can see up close, and the color wash out. 
And you can, black background's not even picking up. Like I said, it'll, these screens will pick up color. That's gonna happen, they're gonna pick up color. But that contrast level is not gonna be there. Okay, let's pour yourself up another demonstration. I think you're gonna enjoy this one a lot. Now, if you notice, let me go back here a bit. Now, they won't show you. I'm not going to break this down for you. I'm going to break it down for you. Look at the color on his boot. See how it's faded? That's supposed to be black. The UV mix is not picking it up. That's not picking it up. White screen's definitely not picking it up. And the Dark Star Knight's not picking it up. That is supposed to be black on that boot. But these are little things that when the contrast level comes up on these screens, they won't pause it on that. I'll pause it in areas where the screen's white, and I'll show you where our screen picks up a slightly darker version when it comes to white levels. I'll show you all that. I got a problem with that. But when they're doing the demonstrations, they're not going to show you that. Mm -mm, no. And you can see the white screen, it's the brightest of them all because it's a white screen. Now look at the UB Mix next door technology. We're blending the screen. And the screen's much lighter than mine. All right, let's go with a um, screensaver snowstorm. See that? If our technology was so dark, you wouldn't be to see it at all, period. And I got it right next to that UV mix. I have no problem with showing white levels. I enjoy showing white levels. There's nothing I'm going to shy away from. If I'm shying away from a certain color, then that means that my product isn't what it's supposed to be. And I'm not happy with that. If anybody knows how I work, I get up early in the morning, I'm a hard worker. I can't, I can't tolerate that. If I'm doing all these crazy tests, different forms of projectors, testing against high performance screens, what makes you think I'm gonna cut corners when it comes to a white level? That's the one area where I'm gonna work the hardest at. All right, let's come out of here and let's bring up, um, let's bring up those, uh, I like to bring up the fish demonstrations, but let's do something different. Let's go with the uh, a food, like a demonstration with food. Let's go with LG, LG Foods, LG Foods, huh? LG Foods. We'll do 4K Foods on here. That's what I'm gonna do. All right. Let's see what we get. Dark environments don't prove anything. I don't know where you get this from. To tell you the truth, how is the projector struggling in a dark environment? You do know how lumens and lights, I'm not trying to dis disrespect you in any way, but you do know the concept of how lumens work on a projector, right? You know that it's very hard for a screen to produce an image in a well-lit environment because the lumen count drops dramatically. That's why when you look at dedicated home theater setups, the walls are always dark. Everything's dark into the environment to kill as much light as possible. So you do know that it's very hard to produce an image in a well-lit environment. The dark, the lights out, that's a cakewalk for the technology. We do demonstrations with a thousand aluminum projectors outside at 13 feet back at six in the evening outside. So inside of here and with the lights out. All right, look, you go back to any of my demonstrations. We've done them already before. I'll pull one up on this video when we get done and you can watch it from the video on my screen as we're doing it with the lights on. 
but that's not hard to do. Whoever told you that having the lights out is complicated for a projector? No, that's what makes it easier for the projector because that's less lumens that the projector is going to lose to begin with. If you're doing a distance throw at 14 feet and your projector, let's say, is around 3,000 lumens, that means 3,000 lumens is no longer 3,000 lumens by the time it makes contact with the screen. A lot of people think because they have a 3,000 lumen projector that their screen is being hit with 3,000 lumens. No, it's not. It's being hit with less than that. Your lumen count will start to drop the minute you turn on that projector and how far it has to travel, considering how much light is in the environment, consider the fact that how many lumens will be dropping from your projector before it makes contact with the screen. Now, on the other hand, the screen has to be to produce a high enough gain to magnetize whatever lumens that may be left over from that travel or that journey that may make contact with the screen and produce a bright enough image so you can see it back. With the lights out, the chances are basically much higher. Less lumens you're going to lose. There's too much. There's not, there's not enough light interference that's going to disrupt the picture of the screen. That's why when you take a white screen and you turn the lights on, the screen washes out. And when you turn the lights off, the picture is better. But lights out demonstrations is not hard to do. It's not even a challenge. And we've done them already. Yeah, let's go back and check my archives. Not trying to keep in mind, not trying to belittle you in any way whatsoever. I'm just trying to get you to understand that is not a hard demonstration. It isn't. When you get a contract and they take you over to a commercial facility over there, they don't go in there and they don't basically say, oh, we're going to turn all the lights up to do this demonstration. No, they're going to have every freaking light on in that facility. It's a commercial lighting. Your projector is not going to be sitting at 14 feet, more like 30 to 40 feet sitting back. So that's how they do things over there. The only time they're going to do a projector in the dark is that they're going to do something for a dedicated theater. But then again, that's a cakewalk. Keep in mind, I can have a projector of 15,000 to 1 in contrast. And if you hit that on a white or gray screen, you're not going to pull a black level. It's not going to happen. You're just not going to get it. That's not going to change it. Calibrating your projector is not going to give you more contrast. That's not going to work. Screen does all the work. Now, you see how his screen, now mind you, his screen is lighter than mine. <coughs> it's a dark gray screen. But as you can see, we're blending into it with no problem. My screen's jet black. Oh, excuse me. When you see when the reds come up, see how the image fades? This is why I was telling you to calibrate your projector. Calibrating projector, how old calibrating projectors came from. When screens were all white, there was no such thing as a gray or black screen. People were calibrating projectors. If you still have to calibrate a projector in this day and time with this kind of technology that we have, there's something wrong there. And mind, the projector we're using in the demonstration is only 720p. That over there is a 1080p projector, which you're seeing surrounded in all that light. That's a hard demonstration to do. 18 feet back and to pull that image off. But then again, that screen paint did pass the 1,000 lumen test, which means if it passed that test outside, inside would be a cakewalk, which is displaying right now. Now, see when the logo comes up? Logo is supposed to be black. It's an LG demonstration. The logo is supposed to be black on there. So we did some bright colors, some bright foods. We did contrast levels, straight colors, and we did some nice bright foods. All right, let's pull up. Um, we're gonna do uh, blah, blah 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 blah. Let's do the the LG with the fish. I like the LG fish. LG fish. Fish. Bring that one up. Let's start off on the first beginning. Any areas that are black and the screen can't produce it will show. This is why these demonstrations are done in the dark. When you made the comment about being in the dark, this is why you watch those demonstrations in the dark. Because that's the only way the screen is going to be able to pull up an acceptable picture. 
So if you are making that statement, that means that if you buy that product, guess where you're going to be at? You're not going to be sitting in this environment. You're going to be sitting in the dark because that's the only way you're going to be able to bring up a proper picture color. So I know what you were thinking. You're probably thinking that, oh, do it with the dark one because I want to see how well the screen looks. If you have to make the screen look good with the lights out, do you know exactly where you're going to be at with the lights out? It's a 4,000 lumen Christie projector. If this thing doesn't react right on this thing, it's a short though at that. If it doesn't react right on this thing, then anything else is not going to react right on it either. So that means you're just going to be sitting in the dark with your screen. You're not going to be doing anything like that. You can't do videos like that. So you just answered your own question on where you're going to be at. Keep in mind, if you're doing a dedicated theater room, all good and well, you're going to be in the dark anyway. But still, black contrast does not pick up on a white or gray screen, even in the dark. If you're expecting to trade your TV in for one of these screens, then for one of these screens they have right here, then chances are you will be in the dark. You can't be in that kind of environment. You're not going to have any window light, none of that nonsense whatsoever. Go buy yourself some blackout curtains and darken all your lights in the environment because that's pretty much where you're going to be at. Getting up from the couch trying to figure out where the coffee table's at so you don't bang your knees. But you see, you got to look at this. Not only are, this, are these screens not producing a black level, but look at the black screen paint. Look how high and bright and beautiful the colors are. Look how white the description is we're going across the screen. Look at the fish protruding out from the screen right there. Fishy, fishy. I was going to get one of these beta fish. They are very, very expensive. And you can get the color. Just can't get the contrast. Now we're going to do a black screensaver with just a fish. This is the screensaver right here. It's just a fish moving across. The background is black. So you can see the black technology is producing nice bright colors. And black contrast at the same time. The other screens can produce bright colors, cannot produce black contrast. Let's find ourselves another more colorful demonstration. I like to keep up with those right there. Whew. Let's see. Okay. This should be a hard one for our screen. I'm going to do the TLC, the girls that get out of this, this fancy sports car. That should be a pretty hard one for us to get through. So let's see how our screen works on that one. I like doing these demonstrations. Don't get me wrong. I like doing this. I'm not going to shy away from them. So we'll do that one right now. Okay. And by the way, Stop using the comment about ca changing the settings on your camera. That doesn't work is what you think it does. It doesn't. It really doesn't. I have a friend of mine who's a, a, a professional photographer, and he laughs his head off every time you make that comment. So don't say that. You're embarrassing yourself. You know other people are reading these, your comments besides us right now. Now remember when this demonstration was done, our screen was so dark, so, so dark. I knew it was black paint in there. I knew it was black paint. I guarantee he probably painted that paint on the night before and saw how that screen popped and said, I can't show this. I got to do something to it because he had to. And we'll do a demonstration with black paint next to our paint. We did that demonstration already, but we'll do it again for kicks and giggles. All right. 
We do it all for kicks and giggles. Now I do expect for these screens to be slightly lighter than our technology because like I said, they are lighter than our screen. But keep in mind, you're staring at, and I've said it many times, a jet black screen. So that's what you have to take in consideration. Jet black screen right next to all these light gray screens. Now, as I said before in the description of the technology, I said clearly that the white levels may be a tad lower, but nothing that's going to disrupt your picture quality. As you see, there's nothing here disrupting your picture quality. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Excuse me. I'm having a very, very amazing day. Everything. I got some things I ordered already came. I can't wait to get that. So I'm still waiting for my gaming chair to get here. That I'm still waiting for. Once that gets here, I can start switching over my stuff. Go back to contrast, more black levels. No, oh, commercial, political commercial, and do politicals. Over here, you can stare at the screen in the, in the light. Over there, there we go, come back. Now you see that right there? You would never see that demonstration on that mix with this much light, because you would see that right from the door. I'm surprised at some of these screens. Some of these screens are four or five thousand dollars. Now I've seen this demonstration already done. When this demonstration was done, it was done in complete darkness. See the screen turn gray? That's supposed to be black. That's supposed to be black. That's supposed to be black. See it right over there? All up in here. That's supposed to be black. Right up in there, all that. Now the Dark Star 9 is doing pretty good, but like I say, you still see a lot of gray. The white screen, it's just not there. It's not there. But look at the UV mix right there. See all them areas that come up gray like that? That's because it that's, that's, it's, it's, can't pick up the contrast at all. Now that's why it looks that way. It's supposed to look like this. That's how it's supposed to look. Not like that. Now if you notice, like I said in my demonstrations, I'm not calling him a scammer. I'm not calling him this, that, and the other. I'm not calling him any bad names or this and that. I don't do that kind of nonsense. I mean, even when he randomly called my phone over and over again and again and again in that video, I ain't paying no mind. You know why I ain't paying any mind? Because I'm a lot more intelligent than that. First things first, if I pick up the phone, and he's on the other side ranting, which we all know he is, and I put it on speaker, that means his voice comes up on recording on this little device right here. And you could actually sue somebody for recording your voice without your permission. It's a violation of civil rights. I know in California, it's a serious law over there. And the same thing here in Pennsylvania. That you have to have somebody's permission before you record their voice. Like when you call a company and they say your phone call is being recorded for training purposes, they have to let you know that you're being recorded. So bottom line is, like if you, if you have video cameras outside your house, you may want to disconnect the audio. 
Because say you catch somebody in your driveway smashing into your car and you got them on tape, but you recorded them talking. They can't use it. It's considered to be hearsay in court. So that's evidence they can't use because you need that person's permission before you can record their voice. So I'm not stupid because if I pick up the phone, he's going to ask to have it on speaker because he wants all y'all to hear what he's saying to me, which means his voice would have been recorded on this device and I would have been in trouble. I'm not dumb, crow. I'm way ahead of you when it comes to the intelligent level. Come on, man. You think I'm dumb when I pick that phone up? No. I already know what you were trying to do. I'm always going to be one step ahead of you, always. And the reason why is because I do things with the Lord. When you do things on a devious level, then, you know, your downfall is always going to be your downfall. That's just the way it is. And what were the point of me picking up the phone and having a conversation with him? For what? What can he possibly tell me that we're doing here live in the demonstration? And his comments, and I left the comments there for everybody to read. He says that it's smoke and mirrors. So how is it possible that this is a live demonstration and somehow I have the ability to manipulate time and reality? That's virtually impossible. Also, too, was the other claim. Um, the settings on my phone. First of all, settings on the phone have nothing to do with the ability to be able to brighten and heighten the screen. As you can see, we have all different screens up here. They all would be reacting differently besides mine. If that was the case, when I showed the white levels, my screen would have pulled at a higher white level than these screens right here. But it didn't. It pulled a slighter lower white level. So, you know, keep it up with that one. Also to consider the fact that I have customers who own my product. Now, if they own my product, and I'm doing the demonstration right here, for all of you to see live, right? How is it possible that in that video with King Black, which has our older technology, is producing a very bright image on his screen. And not only is he producing a very bright image on his screen, but what the other person didn't realize, I'm displaying it on my technology. So I'm showing you on a black screen of another black screen producing a white level while I'm doing it on my screen. They don't think when they talk, they never do. They never think. And then when they're basically backed against the wall, because I had a, people were texting me yesterday, they said, you never answered your comment. You didn't answer. You didn't answer my question. My question was, how was the screen producing such a white level when you claimed it to be so dark? And he couldn't answer it. So he never answered. He's not going to answer it. Two days from now, I'm going to go in and check my video, and I'm going to see if they posted the links at the bottom, which they're not going to do. They're not going to do that demonstration. I already know they're from the door. I couldn't care less. If your product does not produce a contrast level, I don't care. What I do care is the fact that if you try to portray my product as being something that it's not, then I'm going to come out here and I'm going to prove you wrong live. And you will see how we do things over here. We do things by the book, out in the open, where everybody can see everything. There's no little pepper lights here and there. There's no lights only on my side of the screen. Oh, I noticed that too on my dem did the demonstrations paint on. Only my side of the screen had all the ambient light hitting it. Only my screen was next to the window. I noticed all that, those things you do. All that. But I do things fair. Your screen's laying flat against our screen. All the screens are being hit with the same amount of ambient light. And all the screens are being hit by the 4000 lumen projector. Now, like I said, your screen can pull color because it does blend into my screen. And my screen can blend into yours. But by my screen blending into your screen doesn't exactly make your technology all that your screen blends into my screen doesn't make your technology all that great. Because keep in mind, you're the one who said that the screens that we make were so dark you couldn't see it. So if it's so dark and you couldn't see it, how is it possible that we're blending into your technology and you're blending into mine? Which shows our screens aren't that dark. But doesn't make your screen the same level because your screen can't pull contrast. Now, think about that. Our black technology is blending into your colors. And it's pulling a contrast level where your screen can't do this. Now, consider the fact if Crow did decide to make his own black screen paint. How would that damage him? By a lot. And I'll tell you why. When you put on an, um, a, a campaign that you basically... Black screens are bad, you don't want to bother with them, the colors are dim, they're dark and dirty, and then you make one yourself. That means two things. Number one, it makes you a hypocrite. Number two, 
pretty much it just says that I was right the entire time when I said that black technology was the only way to go. Keep in mind, we design other screens too. They have their own different purposes on what they're designed to do. But on the level of going next to a black screen, no, they're not going to be to take that screen on. This screen can blend into a nine. It can blend into the eclipse. It can blend into uh, the uh, black silver. You've seen it do that. But none of the, this, each one of the screens have a, a certain level of contrast they can pull. But this screen pulls 100%. So that's what between all the with Crow carrying on and acting up and his followers coming up and acting up. Because at the end of the day, they come up with no intelligent answers. Nothing but emojis and insults. That's pretty much it. And that's sad. But like I said, you know, if you mind your own business and left my technology alone and going about your merry way, this demonstration would have never been done. I have all your screen paints. I told you that. I bought all your products. I got it over in the warehouse. I want to do demonstrations against your stuff. I can do demonstrations against your stuff. I can take all your screens right now and I can stick them outside at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. See what happens. Watch them all fade one by one. And watch that black screen eat right through all of them. But I don't do that because I don't care. I have other things to do. I have so many projects I'm working on right now. It is absolutely nuts right now. You know the stuff I'm working on. Right now, some other idea just popped into my head to build a stand for two of my projectors to get one to push this way and one to push that way. You'll see what it is when I finish building it. But yeah, it's going to be something absolutely crazy. Trust me. So this is why he can never make a black screen. It'll make him a complete hypocrite. Now, keep in mind, when people come at me and say, well, Ken, you said you would never do a gray screen. No, I would never do a gray screen. Not until we figured out how, to fi how that screen reacts. Now, that's a different story. That's a whole other category of a gray screen. Now, if I came up with a gray screen, knowing that the black screen was going to blow out of the water, knowing it was going to pull contrast, knowing it was going to pull color, knowing the screen was going to fade, there's no point in me designing anything like that because I know the outcome of that screen. But on the other hand, that black silver technology is interesting because it doesn't look gray. When you look at it on the container, when you pour it out, it's gray. When you pour it into another container that is clear and you shake it up, it comes that interesting strange color because it reacts to light. And it can pull a contrast level darker than any gray screen and bright colors which we proved that outside on the demonstration. And I know I keep saying it over and over again, but on a thousand lumen projector, I like that demonstration because I was quite shocked. I didn't think that screen was going to pass it because it was great, but it did. So you really can't put that thing in a category of other gray screens, but then you have to because it is gray, but then again, it doesn't react like any other gray screen. So, you know, we had to change the technology to our level. Let's keep on going, people. But I just want to clear that up, get that all out there. We can all understand, you know. And he wants to go on the offense of like, oh, he's attacking me. He's attacking me. Come on, man. It's a simple demonstration. No one's slandering your name. No one's calling you this. No one's calling you that. No one's saying anything bad about you at all. Simple demonstration side by side. And these are things I noticed when I watched the demonstration. They did the snow against our technology. That the black levels were coming up dark. Oh, let me show you this one. You're really going to enjoy this one. I'm going to do some bright, 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 beautiful flowers. So here you are. I have a black technology that has the ability to produce contrast and insane ambient light rejection technology. I've never seen, and I'm sorry, Black Diamond, but I have to say this. You may get mad at me, but it's true. I've never seen demonstrations on Black Diamond, Elite Screens, DMP Supernova, or any other companies doing demonstrations on that level. I'm going to have a peek at this screen and see how much light the screen is actually reflecting. So not only is it taking on the overhead light, but it's taking on sunlight that's piercing through the window. And my projector sits back 18 feet from the screen. And we're showing a deep, dark, blue scenery of fish. Now, this is what we're going to do. We got a little paint on demonstration over here. I got to get his sample sheet back up on the wall. We're going to paint in half of this screen and uh, with this mix. Now, as I told you before, that you know we want to keep concentrating on saying that our technology, 
against your gray screen does not produce a high enough white level, which we just showed. Now mind you, I did this on your, your darkest screen, which is the UV mix, all right? Did that on your darkest screen, the UV mix, right? So keep in mind, any screen that you have that's lighter than that, it's not gonna go toe to toe with the screen. It's going to blend that screen with no problem, but the contrast levels, it's going to fail miserably on a level that you do not want to see. That gray screen is barely struggling when it comes to contrast levels to this technology. Imagine if you put any one of those light gray screens against that black screen. Now, I can go to my storage unit and I can get maybe um, Frankenstein if you want, but I'm not going to do that today. Well, not today. Hold on, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. We'll let that play. You guys can do it that little for a minute. It has to be a line of sample. Now this is from a while back when I had one of your screen paints. And this is uh, also two. We're going to use a cinema gray. Now cinema gray is a very light screen right here. These screens, I think they run in the range of around $800. Right? $800, $900, $900, $800. It's somewhere in that price of what they run for. I think that's the price of them. Here we go. Got a little gulp from downstairs already set up. That's good. Good to go, good to go. So let's see. Now, as you can see, also too, for those of you to get off the topic of this, the old white screens, not a good idea at all. I have some people who have or at churches or maybe some kind of commercial property. And the first thing I see when I walk into these establishments, these amazing projectors, 4K projectors, but they're producing it on a white screen. And they wonder why the image looks so bad. And that image looks bad. I mean, it looks really bad. You can see where the contrast levels are fading and the color doesn't even pop. And they feel that if they get a more high power projector, like a 5,000 or 6,000 lumen projector, that's gonna make up and give them better picture quality. No, you're gonna whitewash your screen because now there's too much white light hitting the screen. You got the white light that your screen's producing and then the high power projector hitting it. You're just, white, you're just whitewashing your screen completely. All right, so. We're going to take the Cinema Gray 5D. We're not Cinema Gray. We're going to put this, uh, put it right about here, right there. All right. A new sticky tape on that. And we'll go over and we'll grab um, this is light gray screen paint mix. Where the heck is my freaking Richmond going to go to? And we'll put that. Take this one right here. Let's bring this a little better. Let's put that right here. There. All right, and let's put this right next side by side. They can be side by side next to each other. All right. Let's check that one out and see what happens. All right, so we'll go back and we'll hit some other colors to see how these screens are going to react. Let's start off with the white levels first. If you like to show up those white levels, there we go. There's the white levels. All right, now we got two mixes here. I'm not going to tell you what mix that is, but it is one of his. And that right there is the UV right there. Now, let's go over and show red. That's not good. Let's go show some blue. Just because you show a high white level doesn't mean it's a good guy. It's a good, it's a good, it's not a good thing because there's no contrast there. Oops. Let's go over here and look at the screen. Anytime political comes up, we're gonna point over to the screen over there taking on the ambient light. And that screen, if it could talk, it's probably laughing right now at the ambient light. Like, that's all you got? That's all you got? So sunlight hits a direct, <laughs> that's a different story. That's not designed to take on direct sunlight. 
All right, so there's a green right there. All right, now let's bring out that Starfield demonstration. Let's see how many screens will pick up a good contrast level. That is gray, not black. See everything? This right here, our technology is black. The UV is gray. Oh, that's definitely washed. And I told you, if you look at the white screen and you look at the gray screen paint mix, I told you it ain't much of a difference. It really isn't much of a difference, to tell you the truth. It picks up a little bit, but it's not much of a difference. Let's bring up that uh, Sony demonstration on that dark screen right there. Let's see what we get. Now keep in mind, Crow Boys are welcome. I know I didn't post that, but you are welcome to come in, voice your opinion. Because I would like to hear your lot any any kind of logical, I don't know, I would say intelligent um, questions. That's the way I can put it. All right, let's bring up a white snowstorm. Let's bring in the LG Foods. See how the image is faded? Red's faded there. Keep in mind. I paused that for a minute. That one decided to go, nope, not today. Not today. We're not doing this. We are not doing this. We are not doing this. Yes, we are. Now, my, all these greens are lighter than my black screen. And look how bright my image is pulling up. Now the UB mix will pull a better contrast than the mystery mix. Let me not give it a name. Oh, we can leave this on. What am I doing? Not a political commercial. Man, it did just do not want to stay. Like, nope. Nope. Not today. Not today. Yeah, today. 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 Not today. All right. Let's try it again. Neither one of them are pulling contrast at all whatsoever. Colors faded on this screen right here. Contrast levels are failing on that screen right there. Contrast levels are completely gone on that screen. So here we have two of Crow's mixes. This is the one I bought the last time when I had a fight to get that one. This one was sent to me by a customer right there. And then all the other screens, we have a cinema gray, we have a white sheet of paper, and then we have the Paxton and Darkstar 9. Let's breaking it down for you so you can see all the other screens running all at the same time now the black level is completely missing not there and not there you see it there you go all right Let's go paint this screen in. We gotta let this dry because we're gonna do his screen against white levels. So, you know, 
and they don't show that off. We have to show that off. When I show off my black technology, I always have to show off a white screensaver every single time. That's important because that is a strategy of mine to show you a white screen. And people say, why would you show off a white screen on a black screen? Wouldn't that be the one thing you want to try to avoid? No, no, no. That's the one thing I want you to see. I'm going to show you the white screen first so you can sit there and think in the back of your mind, well, gee whiz, um, his screen is going to do badly when it comes to the other colors because his screen is producing such a dark white level. And then when I bring them colors up and you watch them pop, boom, 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 and you watch our screen can basically maintain and blend into the screens without any problem, then you know exactly how amazing the white level is on our technology and how amazing the contrast and how contrast is very important. Let's go real quick. We're going to bring up the, before I paint this, we're going to bring in the 4K fish, which I like to do. We call it, this is my blend screen. It says all the colors. Oop, got a little commercial in there. We'll watch my screen in the other room. Produce, still playing an image at 754. And this is what crow boys are not going to like or anybody's going to like because here we go. Voila. If your screen is not pulling contrast, it's not going to basically have the ability to be able to pull away. Well, UV Mix has a bit of contrast, as you can see. It doesn't have enough contrast to pull a straight black level because, like I said, anytime we pull up anything involves contrast, it comes up tannish. The other screens don't have any contrast at all, which I'm surprised because that's a very dark screen and that's a very dark screen. Now, let's take all the other screens out of the equation. Let's remove this, the Dark Star 9. Let's remove the Cinema Gray. Let's remove the white sheet of paper. Let's remove all of this off the screen. Take everything off the screen, period. We are just going to leave the UV mix on the screen. By itself. My screen slides in my screen, but look, watch this. But then right in, I get it nothing. I'm going to put the white levels in, I always do. There's the white levels. Here's the blue. And let's pull up, let's see. Hmm. I said, can pull color, can't pull contrast. That's the problem. Can't pull contrast level. I'm going to leave it on the star fill as I paint this screen. There we go. All right, let's get cracking, Jackson, because I got a lot to do today. I'm gonna blend, I'm gonna paint the screen in real quick. All right, and you can also see my screen in the next frame. That's the ultra short, the right over by the window. There, I'm loving this, man. All right, so let's go on in. Like I said, it's not slaying this product. We had other screens up there besides this too, so you know it is what it is. So I'm getting mad people. I'm just doing a demonstration the way it's meant to be done. This is how the demonstrations are supposed to be done. You're supposed to show everything. Let me put this against my sofa. Maybe I got a better chance of anchoring it a little better. 
next to the sofa. All right, I gotta bring this down a little bit more. All right, so we're gonna paint one half of that with the UV mix, not my black technology. Now keep in mind, I have to do these same demonstrations, and you've seen me do them already, with the other high performance screens in there. If I didn't, there'd be no point in me having those high performance screens to begin with. They're there for a reason. They're there so I can do demonstrations and tests to see how my technology stacks up against the more high performance projection screens out there. So I have to have those sample sheets. And actually, there's a couple more companies I got my eye on that I will be ordering your sample sheet. And just so you can see that, it all blends together, all same screen. I'm going to blend this one with this one, and then I'm going to repaint this one again so you can see that it is actually the product, but I don't know how we're going to miss that at all up here, to tell you the truth. But let's get this one back up here where it needs to be at. Like I said, if this was Sony and Xbox, and Sony says, hey, guess what? We got the same processor you have so and so and so, I bet you Microsoft's going to get to that. Well, no, the heck, you don't. This is the difference between my technology and your technology. Yeah, we're going to show the difference. And this is what I'm doing right now. I'm showing you the difference. So that's this product right there already painted on, and that's this product sitting against my screen right there. It's supposed to be displaying a contrast level. You can't pull contrast on a dark gray screen. You know why I know that? Because... I test those high performance screens on there. Now, if I got all those high performance screens, which I have in my kitchen drawer, and I test my screens on that technology, what do you think you stand a chance of going against my technology when it's used to being tested against high performance screens? I always do certified um, test demonstrations. I'm testing my screens against this stuff all day long. That's not even certified. My stuff should be certified. Some of the stuff this crazy stuff does. Well, like I said, I couldn't wait to get outside. I'm the only person I know that gets excited about being out in the sun. And I still can't get over that. That technology developed took, and come on, you got to admit it. It took a direct hit from sunlight. It did it. So we have the first, we have the first, at least we know exactly how to do it. And so who's going to watch your screen? The fellow sat there and said, well, who's going to sit there and watch the screen in the sunlight? You don't think big, man. You don't think big. Concerts, uh, all kinds of, uh, you can have, and keep in mind, people do those, out, well, when, once COVID passes, but, but people do those outdoor events when you do those blow-up projection screens that you vent for your kid's birthday party so they can sit back there and watch Spider-Man on the screen. Yeah, well, imagine a company like that would have the ability to fire up a projector at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and watch an image off it with no problem. Do you have any idea how much money they would make? Because usually with a white screen, you would have to wait to around 9 or 10 in order for the color to actually come out somewhat decent. Do you have any idea how much revenue you would make if you could fire up a projector at 12 o'clock in the afternoon? Drive in movie theaters coated with that technology. That means instead of having the movie start at 9 and 10... You can have the movie start at 12 or 3 or 4 or 6. That is extra revenue that you have not, not been able to obtain from your company because our technology allowed it to be the change. You're not thinking of the big picture here. It goes farther than just inside the home. 
So you have to consider that and what that technology can do. Storefront windows can advertise about the you having awnings or anything. They can advertise right across, right when the sunlight hits the glass, you can see it crystal clear from across the street. You're not thinking of the big picture here. Do you know how many storefront windows are in an average store? Now, keep in mind, this stuff, as we're designing it, is expensive to make. So it goes for around already priced, and someone already just pay, put a um put a um, they just put down their um um security deposit at three hundred dollars for two quarts already. Because it took a direct hit from sunlight, and it proved it. Not only it didn't do it from the front, but it did it from the back. You know how hard that is to do? That means that light, when it filters takes on the projector, has to hit the glass. And any of that, and that sunlight is eating away at it as it's coming through. It has to push through the glass, then push through the screen, and then produce an image on the opposite side that's being hit by direct sunlight. It's not sitting in the shade. It's not sitting inside the house covered up by windows and doors. It's sitting right out there taking that direct hit and it produced color, bright, vivid color, something that should have faded and washed out. So you gotta think of the big picture here, my friend, the big picture. Now, sadly, because of COVID-19, a lot of um, stores or restaurants are having outdoor eating because it's safer, you know what I mean? So it's more safer, outdoor eating. But keep in mind, when you're inside with a projector, you can show movies and whatever because you're inside of, that, of an environment. But what they're trying to do is they want to bring that same entertainment feeling outside. You can't do that if you've got a screen that washes out every time the sun hits it. You see what I'm getting at? Do you know how many, dear, how many restaurants sit over in California that would have that technology coded outside? That's $300 every two quarts. Think about it. And that's cheap considered to some of the stuff I've seen that people charge people for actually some form of um, film, transfer film, like $1,000 for transfer film. And not a big sheet either, something that would probably cover, i uh, say, probably about that door right there for $1,000. Two quarts of that, because it's a one coat application and it's easy to apply, you could probably do up to about a 150 inch screen, 160 inch, 170 inch screen for that one coating. So you can do a 160 inch sheet of glass. Yes. Could you show the difference between the darker environments? We already went over that already. I think I explained, I think that's an old message. I explained that one already about how it's easier to do demonstrations in the dark it is with the lights. So I don't know where people get that from. Like right now, if I were to show that, and I'm, I'm thinking I would do that, I'm gonna do a night demonstration. That screen, if I take that technology, it's designed to take direct hits from sun, from my sun, in the morning, we did that around, uh, let's see, it was probably around eight or nine o'clock in the morning when that demonstration was done. So someone's up at its peak hour. We'll do a demonstration again at night outside. It's just gonna be easy, man. It's gonna be so freaking easy. It's not even funny. It's no challenge there at all whatsoever. i tell you the truth. I'm gonna have to get a real crappy projector out to do that one because I'm not doing it on a 4,000 lumen. That's just gonna be a waste of my freaking time. It's too easy. It's nighttime. Oof. Is it going to struggle? It's not going to struggle like, look at this. You know what that screen looks like at nighttime? It's insane what they look like at nighttime. Matter of fact, I did a demonstration. I did a demonstration yesterday walking through my house with all my screens lit up in neon. These things look insane at nighttime. Oh, my goodness, you have no idea. No idea how amazing these things look. If they, quick, quick, wait. If this screen is thriving that well with the lights on, what do you think it's going to look like in the dark? You know, blow your socks off, man. You'll be sitting up there waking up like, where are my socks? Sneakers will be tied, but your socks will be missing. I know this. I walk around. There. I don't have TVs in my home. I haven't had a TV in 10 years. <sighs> I'm going to work on this acoustic screen, man, but I had to order some stuff today. I, might, I think I'm going to order another 100-inch fixed frame screen today. I'm going to work on that acoustic screen because I got some ideas for that. We'll do something pretty cool. See, I want to do something where I can bring a smoke machine into it because I want to do this all black acoustic screen with the speakers behind it and black LED lights behind the back of it. Probably play some AC-DC behind the back of it. 
you shook me all night long, yeah, that'd be the perfect song for it. And just have the speakers come on, oh man, with the smoke pulling out around it, I mean, that'd be sick. I might do that one. But then again, I'll get it with the copyright because it's ACDC. But that would be the perfect song for it. Matter of fact, this another day, I gotta do some work in the backyard. I'm gonna play it today. Alright, I need to get a fan in here. We can get this to dry. It dries pretty fast, I'll give them that much. It does dry pretty fast. Ugh. It'll clean up well too. Then get this paint. Make sure you use an oil-based paint you don't want to touch that stuff. Then you can ask them for that. Ugh. I don't want to use oil-based paint. That's the worst thing you want to use. Oil paint or glossy paint. Glossy paint hot spots like a mother jumper. It does the hot spots like crazy. You don't want to use that. You're reflecting 4,000 lumens off of a, of a glossy surface. Yeah, that's not going to go well. All right, we're going to plug this bad boy in. Let's see. Let's take out the LED lights. The bottom. I'm going to get started with that too. All right. Let this dry. Shake it long. Beautiful, ain't it? Hey, where are the cold boys at? I think they'd be up by now. All right. What are we doing today upstairs? Uh, these need to be off. These are lead lights. I'm still wiring these things in. There we go. Guaranteed to trigger the other ones on. Ah, uh, yeah, we're going to something in there. Yesterday, really interesting, I had a little audience outside my house because I'm sitting here messing with the LED lights and everybody's up there watching. Oh, this is a... Uh, so, what I did was I took apart the chair, right? Broke it down and sat it down thinking, okay, how far would I have to sit to sit under this bad boy? So I need a gaming lounge chair. That's what I'm looking for. I saw a couple of them, pretty good price, and I got to see where the chair is going to sit. Got to measure it because when it fits in there, it has to fit in there just right so my head doesn't bump the top of that. But I want to sit something real nice and comfortable my legs can kick up. So that's what I'm doing. That. That's why I cut that in half for because just to give me an idea. So... I'm online right now at Amazon or eBay trying to find me a nice lounge chair. Maybe something with a speaker system built into it because I've seen these things before. So I'm trying to find one, a good one with the speakers and everything inside of it. So I can just lounge right in there and just hook it up. And then right here, put a nice little shelving area where I can put all my gaming systems some swap boxes and stuff like that. Or I can change out my system. And I got the Dreamcast in here somewhere. Oh, there we go. There's the Dreamcast over there. I found all my original memory, memory cards, which now I can upload. This one has, as a matter of fact, the GameCube has my original memory card in it. So I will be playing this tonight. I should bring this downstairs to the big screen and play it. No, no, maybe. I should bring it downstairs to the big screen and play it. So all my saved games are on there. 
So I got the Dreamcast. I got Donkey Kong with the bongos. Do, 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 do. The original game. Oh, let me show you something real quick. I found this the other day, digging around in my stuff. And I came across this. Let's see if you can find it. G.I. Joe Periscope. Look at this. You know how old this thing is? In the original box. I think this came out in 1986 or something. Open this one up. I wanted to play with it. Yep, there it is. In the box. With instructions and everything. I told you, I, click, I clicked on Vintage Toys. I collect vintage toys. I got G.I. Joe's, Transformers, all in the box. Never open, never used. Mint condition. Worth a lot of money. I told you, if I didn't want to do something good, I'd just sell for my collection. My collection's worth a ton of money. I thought I even had that thing, the Periscope. But then again, I'm not going to sell my collection off. When I turn 60, I'm opening up all my stuff and I'm playing with it. Everything done. I, I got Tyco, the racetrack. Remember those back in the day? Dukes of Hazard. I got the Knight Rider. I got all of them. I'm opening up all my stuff for the celebration for six years old. I'm opening up all my toys and I'm playing with them. Yes, sirree. Then I'm just going to give some of them away. All right, so let's get this light to cut off. I got Luigi Mansion. I got a lot of game, um, two games, but... I got to go and start doing some shopping. Freaking Amazon wants too much money. I found out for a fact that Power Stone is not a cheap game. I got the Japanese version. I was trying to get the American version. They want 100 bucks for it. So it looks like I'm going to be 100 bucks for that game. Because I have the Japanese version. It's a big topic here. I thought I forgot how to play it. So these are my games right here. Oh, Time Splitters. That's, a, that's an amazing game right there. Uh, the Donkey Kong with the bongos, which I got over there in the box. Die Hard. Yes, I got Die Hard. I love freaking Die Hard. This thing is kind of heavy. Yep. Mint condition. All my stuff is always in mint condition with the books and everything. I have Medal Honor. Yes. And the original Call of Duty. Yes. But I want to get some Sonic games too. So I'm gonna get cracking on that, some Sonic games. But I'm gonna have to get them over on eBay and get them used because right now they have them brand new. They got Luigi Branch and brand new over at, um, over there. They want freaking like something like $200 for it. $200 for Luigi's Branch. It's a bit too much. Yeah, I got a lot of games for my Dreamcast, so. I ordered an adapter for my Dreamcast so I can plug it into HDMI. Because right now, uh, the GameCube is running through um, 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 audio video, basically analog video. And the Xbox is running through S Video Jack. And what else is running through? Um, let me get my lights out here too. And that's what every day, just a light pushing through without my overhead lights. Let's watch some videos on the big screen while we're waiting for this screen to dry. Let's see what we got to play around with. Go the other way. Other way. Fan dry on the other screen right now.
That's gonna take forever. Let me see what we're gonna do here. Let's, let's see if we speed this up a bit. I got the thousand lumen projector over here. We can use a thousand lumen projector on this demonstration here. I think that's what we should do. Let's see, where are we gonna start at from here? Hmm. All right. Alright, so we're going to set up over there, and I'm going to get the thousand projector. I'm going to use the Sony thousand lumen projector right here. I'll bring my fan, turn it down a little bit. We don't need that loud now. We can lightly dry the screen from over there. Let me see how he does on white levels. Doesn't it? That looks beautiful. This is technology. It's lighter than my screen. See that? Much lighter than my screen. We blend right into it. And mimic its technology that fast. We're going to go back to that one. Look at that. Let's mimic it. Close. The screen's gray. Can't pull contrast. That's black. That's not black. You see it right up close. There's no way in the world my black technology is that dark. No, 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 no. I'm not blending your screen. I'm blending your screen 
and I'm showing the flaws in your screen when we do contrast. I can blend it to color. That's not a problem. You got a problem with blending it to contrast. That's a problem. Not the same technology, man. You can mark it. I'm not saying anybody can mark it in gray screen. It's good. You know what I mean? But it's not going to match black technology. It's not. Don't get me wrong. You're not saying it's not bad technology. It's good. It just can't keep up with a 12. It can't produce contrast. And then that other screen paint, we that black silver, that black silver blend. Whoa, wow. That black silver basically mimics the screen where the point just disappears completely off the screen. And it can produce contrast. Your screen can't produce contrast when you're not versus another great screen. I'm not going to put you down in any way. It's just to show you. I'm not calling you a scammer. I'm not calling you this. I'm not calling you that. I'm just doing a simple side-by-side -side demonstration. I don't take it personal. We do things differently over here, that's all. See how much ambient light? Look at my environment. Look at the corners of my, my walls. Look at that. So you can see everything crystal clear in here? You know why that guy requested to do that demonstration in the dark? Because that's the best and the high points of that screen paint. That screen paint only shows the best high points when it's in complete darkness. That should tell you something right there. Because that's where you're going to be sitting at with that screen in your living room in a dark environment. Because any contrast that pops up on that screen is not going to do well. Let's show you. Let's go back to, and we're not going to have, it's not going to be too dark in here because my house is pretty well lit. Let's go back to that real quick while I'm setting all this up. And we get a commercial, we just going to pop over. Oh, commercial camera? No, we'll forget it then. We're good. Don't even get a clear commercial. I don't like to do those. All right. So look. I'm going to take out my overhead lights. See how much better the, the um, contrast level gets? Now I told you my house isn't dark because I got a lot of windows and we get a lot of light in this house. So you can see the contrast is a, a lot better. As I start to darken the environment, the contrast levels on this screen are going to pull up a little bit better. It's the fact that that's where I'm telling you, that's where you're going to be at. You have to be in the dark. There's no point in you having some... You see how I got my... Uh, or you'll see all the toys and stuff when I set up my, I finish setting up my game room because I got a bunch of toys and stuff I'm putting there. You can't show any of that off. What's the point of you having a man cave and showing off, like I said, showing off your trophies of all the stuff that you collected down through time, your jerseys and whatever you collected. I'm not a big sports fan, so, you know, I don't know what you collect, but I'm pretty sure you got a lot of cool stuff in there to show off. You can't show that off if you're sitting in the dark because every time you turn on the projector, the screen's going to fade out on you. So you have to be in the dark. We're in here. I can show you a demonstration on a star field, and you can see everything in my environment with no problem. Check out the sloths. You see everything. All right. Let's get this plugged up because that should be dry by now. understand it's you know mine when I test out my product and I'm doing demonstrations we don't grab his stuff and do demonstrations off of it. there's no point we do high-end certified screens and the same thing goes for all the other screens I watch y'all demonstrations I see what how y'all set up things in y'all demonstrations I'm using high power projectors you don't use 720p projectors in y'all demonstrations and you should you should Go into a show booth, sit down, you look at the nice sofa, the movie chairs, and you look at all how they got everything all set up. It looks amazing in there. You sit down, you see the screen, boom, come on, you go, wow, this is absolutely incredible. Then they tell you the screen's $5,000. You think, good God. But you don't really know how exactly how expensive the projector that's actually projected on the screen costs. Because I guarantee it's not 720p. I guarantee you. And I guarantee it didn't cost you $100 either. This projector cost me $100. And look at the image I got off my screen in a fully lit environment. In the Mayan, the environment is dark. And when you sit in that environment, that environment has been customized and catered to have the lighting just right so they can give off the appearance that they are showing ambient light projection technology, but they really aren't because there's nothing really hit, hitting the screen. So if that environment has been catered for that, what happens if you stick it in your environment that's not been catered? And you're not using a four or $5,000 projector. 
Because you can't go in there and say, hey, I'm using a 720p projector. Can I get the same image? They'll laugh in your face. They will laugh in your face. But over here, we're using 720p. All right, um, I think we're good. I'm just saying his own category, everybody's own category, the technology is good for what it's used for. But don't compare your stuff to mine. Because I'll show you why it's not my, it's not like mine. But I'm pretty sure in its own category, it fits its purpose. It does. It fits its purpose in its own category. You don't belong in my category. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Not being rude, it is what it is. That's why you're seeing the screen produce a star fill that's jet black on our screen in a fully lit environment. And it's just not even pulling up. None of the screens are going to pull up. Be fair. We'll sit them right next to a dark star nine right here, right there. Dark star nine. See how dark that is right there? It's much darker than his screen. There we go. The reason why I've got confidence in throwing those screens up there is because I've done all these tests already before. So many times it's not even funny. So that's how I know my technology works. That's how I have confidence on camera. It has nothing to do with smokes and mirrors. It has something to do with hard work, dedication, getting the job done the right way. That's why I can do demonstrations like that. I can grab any sample sheet I want off of here. It's all going to react the same way. I've done these tests over and over and over again. Here we go. This is the name brand screen right there for all of you. What's this demonstration done against our product or something like that? I'm not sure. Anywhere. See, my screen's 135 inches. Since it's 135 inches, it makes it right near the edge of the ceiling. And since it makes it night right near the edge of the ceiling, you see that ceiling light right there? It's in direct contact with my screen at all times. Now, if my screen was 100 inches, it means it would avoid more of the ambient light because it would be a little lower away from the ceiling. But since at 135 inches, people don't realize that my screen is sitting right near the edge of the top of the ceiling, which means that light, when it comes out, is boom, hitting my screen all the way down. Even got some light coming in from here. And look at the other screen sitting in there, smiling and laughing, having a ball. This is the result you get when you do your homework. My screen doesn't sit against the wall next to an air conditioner in a dark environment where you can't see anything. My screen sit in well-lit ambient light environments. That's why I say you do those tests, they gotta be done outside. And that's what you should be doing. You should be working on trying to get a screen to produce an image outside. Because by the time you accomplish that, we'll be, de we'll be dealing with direct sunlight. Always one step ahead. Let's see what we got going on here. We're all plugged in here. That's all good. Get that light coming on. Okay. There we go. So that's my next stage, direct sunlight. Because I've always wanted to conquer it. Now I think I figured out how to do it. Now, if I want it to be roofless, which I'm not going to do, when we do finish that construction for that new technology that takes on direct sunlight, I could buy every last paint you have. I could buy every form of projection screen sample I can get my hands on the market, and I can do one demonstration and blow them out in one hit outside in direct sunlight. Not just you, everybody. Everybody, except there's one company I can't get my hands on, which... You don't know why. That's kind of messed up. That is really messed up. I don't see why I can't. What's the problem? Why don't you stay? And I'm, don't worry, I'm not going to quit my day job. All right, let's see what's going on here.
All right, let's see. Okay, game. Sony, right now, is acting up. So, I'm going to do you a big favor. I'm going to give you no excuses. I'm going to hit you with a 4,000 lumen projector. All right? You're going to be grace with Chrissy. So, that's what we're going to do. Go make the screen disappear. Well, I think the other one should do pretty well, but let's go make it disappear. Oh, that one's on. We're not watching that. You can check out the screen sitting in the sunlight, and we're actually in the uh, area in the daytime hours. Well, I forgot to unplug this up. We should have a scene here. Here we go. We're back. So let me see. Someone said get up real close. Why don't you get real close? There we go. Is that close enough for you? Mm, is that close enough for you? Is that close enough for you? How many mess around with you? I'm just playing around with you. <laughs> it's early in the morning. People haven't had cereal. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a buggy. When I had cereal, I'm a little silly when I have cereal. But there you go. There's my technology against his. Watch this. See how lighter his screen is than mine? Now watch this. Come back over again. Back over again. How light the screen is. Two different shades. Then right back in. Dark Star 9. Right up close on top of it. Stand in front of it. Oops on top of it, block it up. See how amazing it looks? We have a high light, way level. I didn't like that demonstration too much. See that? There you go. I do more. Can someone ask me to say, well, I guess I do more. Um, Someone's asking me to stand right up on top of the screen, so I did better for you. I, not only did I stand up on top of the screen, but I moved it away to show you how light that screen sit next, had sits next to mine. And yet my screen is blending into that screen where you can't tell which one's which. Watch this. Voila. It's going. Do you have any idea how long it takes to get a black screen to produce a white level, layers of white levels to blend into a screen that's far lighter than it? It is not easy at all.
Cool, boys. I wish you were here to see this. I'm, you probably are here. You're probably just not saying anything. Get close up on it. As close as you want. As close as we can. So we're going to do this one on a 4000 Lumen Chrissy projector. Right here we have UV mix, white screen. We're going to show white snow levels. I do white snow, snow levels all the time. As a matter of fact, I just did a few minutes ago. I showed white snow levels with my white screen next to... What are we on here? We're using on here. Uh, let's see. We're using... HDMI. Where did HDMI? HDMI. All right. Detected. Oh, uh, no detection. HDMI. Oh, shoot, wrong button. HDMI. No. HDMI. HDMI. No, no, no. There we go. HDMI. Maybe no detection. I do not have any detection, it's right there. So it's going on right now. Right, there we go. Are you kidding me? There we go. That's why I told you Chromecasters are freaking temperamental, man. They work when they want to work. And this Chrome, is this Fire Stick works out the way I think it does? I'm replacing all the Chromecasters in the house with Fire Sticks today. Which I should unplug. I should actually hook that thing up, but I want to hook it up to my main projector. There we go. So let's go in and let's pull up. Oh God! Don't don't start that nonsense. Let's pull up the color white. It's going to pull color. It's supposed to. It's a gray screen. Oh, we're on the wrong side. Disconnect. Come over here, and I think we're in. Attic or backyard? I think we're in backyard. There you go. There's a white level right there. We don't call it mix. Oh, Seymour. Seymour butt. <laughs> yeah. I like that one. I like that one. That that tag is sick. I like that, Seymour butts. That's awesome. That is awesome. You today, I salute you, my friend. That is awesome. <laughs> that made my day right there. That literally made my day right there. That was a good one. Let's see. The reason why I'm doing this is to show you that, look, 
he can't just home in and say, oh, because there's a black screen, the white level is going to be dark. Any screen that's darker than a white screen, the white level is going to be dark. It doesn't make a difference. It could be any one of these high-tech sample sheets behind me. Only a white screen is going to produce 100% white level. So to keep harping on by saying, oh, yeah, this white level is so low, they're so dark, look and compare it to a white screen. You need to compare your stuff to a white screen and keep it, keep it fair. Your stuff does not show well on a white screen. But I guarantee you, I can pull a contrast level and you can't. And I can blend into your screen. So this is what he's not showing you. This is what you should be seeing. That's why when you see me do demonstrations, you see me display a white surface, white snow, white animals, whatever, anything white that I can get nice and bright colors. The screen is going to pull contrast. It's going to pull color. It's going to pull color and contrast to a certain degree. It's definitely going to pull contrast because it is darker than a white screen. I told you anything that's darker than a white screen is automatically going to pull contrast. You can go and get gray primer and slam it on the side of a white screen. It's going to pull a darker image on the gray primer. But what he should be doing in demonstrations, he should be showing off the difference between his technology when it comes to different forms of gray which we did with the black silver. The black silver, we did all different forms of gray screens versus in our own gray screen. And that's what he doesn't do. Have to do those demonstrations. All right, let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. And let's go over real quick. And let's go take his. Because we got this screen. I'm pretty sure the screen is dry in the back. I do not want to lay that screen against my screen and jack my screen up. Sure. It's dry in the back. And I'll show you up close so you can see this. That's how dark a UB mix is next to a white screen. It's dark. I'm going to make it seem like his screen was so bright. And mind you, this is his mix laying up against our screen. Now he can pull a little wider level than us, but like I said, screen we can, we can blend the screen with no problem. Let's pull up some clouds. Now, for those of you who are saying that our product was too dark, you need to look at reality here. Because he's constantly putting his demonstrations on white levels versus a jet black screen, which produces amazing white levels, and it does. But he's not putting his screen against a white screen to show you the difference between his screen and a white screen. Now, he may use the lighter screen paint that he has because that would show a better image. That would give him a higher chance of being able to produce a, a, a much better white level. So he picks and chooses his battles. But he's not going to put that UV mix up against a white screen and say, hey, look, it, does, it produces high white levels like a white screen. No. I would never even make that comment in any of our screen paints because I know none of them would ever have the ability to be able to go side by side to a white screen. Let's go over to, let me see, the clouds. Let's put in some abstract art. Now, let's give him the fish demonstration, which we're going to do here. I always do that 4K fish demonstration so you can see. Now, mind you, like I said, 
this screen is brighter, lighter than my screen. Or the UV is lighter than my screen, the black one. Okay, you're set. As I spike it, I'll tell them the living room to customize his furniture. They only pay for what they need. Got it? Did you get that? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. Hey, Mr. Bell. I want you to look at that carefully. The projector. You can see the color of his product. Your screen's not wet in the back because I do not want that on my black screen. See how he can't pull contrast here? So this is where the screen is supposed to be black at, right here. It's not black there, but he can't pull contrast. We can match the screen. See the sample sheet that I had? Let's turn my his screen on for. Same thing. No difference, because they try to make an excuse by saying, well, the screen you had, which was a sample, because we didn't see you paint it, it's basically something out. It's not our product. Oh, it is. It is your product right there. I'm tired. Do you ever get tired of taking stabs in the dark and basically hitting yourself in the chest? Because you keep you get wrong every single time. You know I'm going to come in here and back it up. So there's your technology there. There's your technology here. And I'm blending your screen. And your screen is lighter than my screen. Dying more than three times. Let's see where I was at. Oh, 10%. Woo, pretty low. Okay, way. Okay, now we're going to go over to. I'll leave a commercial on there, it's not a problem. Now I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to go over. This is the part you might not like, but I'm sorry I got to do it. Yeah. Oh, there you go, right here.
way. For the person who made the statement that nines are gunmetal, that's the color of a nine. They're not gunmetal. So you know. All right. So this is the part that I don't like. I'm taking some of my paint. Well, that's going to go anyway. I'm taking some of my paint and I'm going to coat it on this roller. And I'm going to go over the screen. Just a little marking. Just to keep this a little bit more. More and just do something interesting here. Something a little bit higher up. I think I'm going to get that crate over here. It'll work. Get some of that white screen there too. I do a crazy job with it. That's just. screen is already soaking wet and it's displaying white already from the stars. See all around the screen where it's not picking up? And our screen picks up with no problem? I'd hate to do that kind of demonstration to you, man. I really do. But you have to learn. I'm sorry. But don't, don't compare your technology to mine. Just don't do that, okay? Because you will see, like I said, I can do things on a level, man, that I'm not trying to brag or anything, but don't, don't compare my technology to yours. Just stay in, your own, stay in your own lane. Leave it at that. I take no pleasure in doing this. Didn't want to do this demonstration. We call these splatter demonstrations. Splatter demonstrations, like I told you, will ruin your product. Because what it is, we take your product and we splatter. We don't even paint the screen. We splatter it across the screen to show you how they react. You'll see images pull up that you've never even seen before. We tested this technology. I designed it. I know what it's designed to do. If I can design a technology, it can take a direct hit from sunlight and basically can produce images on a projector of a thousand lumens outside. What do you think I can do inside? Look at that up close. That screen's not even painted, it's splattered on. Wake up call, tell you to stay in your own lane. 
Because if you think you want to go against that new stuff we're working on, I would advise you don't do it. So next time you want to do a demonstration, I'll wipe them all out in one hit. Like I said, screen's still soaking wet. Now blend it your screen with a soaking wet screen. Not even dry yet. And the interesting thing about it, you see my outside screen around it, that's dry. And look at the screen in the middle, that's soaked, that's dabbed with paint. You want to go down that road? You want to challenge that technology? I told you not to do it. I warned you not to go near it. Now I'm going to give you another fair warning. That black silver we developed in there, don't do a side by side next to that. You will not like the outcome of it. I'm telling you right now, you will not like the outcome of it. If you want, we can do the demonstration for you. I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to leave it this way so y'all can just soak it in. See, when I lay my technology against yours, it gives it a bit of a fair chance. If I do a splatter screen display on your screen, you're going to see your screen for what it is. You'll see the, the advancement of our technology. Look how that soda pops and bubbles. Look at the contrast in between. And look at on the UV mix washed out. You would have a fighting chance in the dark. This is what I mean by you have to sit in the dark with that screen paint. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to have a somewhat um, a decent image. So if you trade your projector in for, you trade your TV in for a projector, just be warned, you're just going to be sitting in the dark, that's all. I wouldn't even claim it to be ambient light rejection. 
He can't claim it to be ambulant rejection. He can't. That's one of the things. That's why he's saying it's not even ambulant rejection. He can't make that claim because he knows his product fades when the light comes on. You know how much harder he would have to work if he claimed it to be ambulant rejection? I mean, he would have to stand on all the tests that we do on doing ambulant rejection demonstrations. It was kind of like a bit of a shortcut. So since you don't claim it, you really don't have to do any demonstrations on it. And you have excuses for the downfall of your technology. So if your customers say, hey, look, I turned the screen on and it faded. Well, technically it's not ambulant rejection. So, you know, hey, keep in mind, we've had screen paints out there before ambulant rejection technology ever came out. And we're still producing images in fully lit environments. This is a fancier term of just putting it that, oh, we have this technology that can do such and such and so. And I haven't seen a lot of high-end screens backing it up too well. There's a 3,000 lumen projector, around a couple of thousand dollars, and I'm doing this on a long throw. You have, keep in mind you have a short throw, mine's a short throw, but yours is an ultra short throw. So yours is about a foot away from one of the screen. Mine sits back around about seven and a half feet from the screen in a fully lit environment. And you can make the claim that, well, it's a 4,000 lumen projector. That's why your image is pulling. Your screen is lighter than my screen. Your screen should actually be pulling a higher image than my screen on 4,000 lumens because it is a brighter, it's a lighter screen than mine. When I stand in front of the projector, which screen is actually darker and which screen is actually uh, um, lighter? The UV mix would be. So at 4,000 lumens, you should be to pull a better image. But you pull a faded image. And that's the reason why it's because your screen has no form of real technology. I'm sorry, but it doesn't. I don't like doing these splatter demonstrations. Like I told you, are brutal. You do the same thing. If I take an all when I take all black fabric, I gotta splatter my technology across it and show a white snowstorm. I gotta figure out when I look at that, that's how we test that technology, see how it can produce those images. And I told you if I did your demonstration on a splatter screen, you know, it, the outcome is gonna be bad. Now, like I said, the UV mix can produce color. It can, but it can't produce contrast. And as I said before, contrast is everything. Well, that being said, That's rough. So that wet paint, that soaking wet paint, splatter on your screen produces a red level. The screen doesn't even come close to a red level. This is why you gotta calibrate those projectors. You gotta go through all that nonsense. Well, there's no need to go any farther from here. I proved my point. You're not in the same category, buddy. And I hate to do it that way. Like I said, I watch your demonstrations and you cut a lot of corners. You play a lot of tricks and everything, but I'm not going to play tricks with you over here. I'm going to be up front. I'm going to show you as honest as I possibly can. I put your other sample sheets up there so your screen wouldn't feel alone. We're all in the same form of ambient light. We're not doing things where you have all this ambient light hitting my side of the screen and your screen hitting nothing. I watch those demonstrations. You make sure our screens always sit on the side where all the light is at. And then that demonstration where you basically mix that black paint in to make it sound like it was our paint, that was a bad idea right there. Because I was going to come into a demo, this same demonstration with our screen versus black paint. That's why you came in the room yesterday. And I'm happy you did. I asked you the question. Why is that screen so bright? And you couldn't come up with an answer. The only thing you could say was, oh, it's the camera. It's the camera. The camera ain't got nothing to do with it. I showed you a demonstration of a customer who has the product. And he's doing a demonstration. The screen is nice and bright. 
So what is it? You couldn't tell me. It's because you faked that demonstration. And you want to say we're the same product. We're not the same product on no, no form whatsoever. But I do got a word of advice for you. When the, this technology right here, you're not going to touch. The new stuff we have coming out, oh man. If you decide that you want to go against that, I'll do it for you. I'll go to my storage unit. I'll get every last one of your screen paints. I'll buy whatever you have. Don't deny my orders. Don't cancel them. Don't drop your eBay account or none of that nonsense. And I know you go through crucial screening when people try to buy from you. They got to email you only. So that's a red flag right there. That people got to email you and go through these, 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 these interrogations just to get paint out of you. Because you're afraid it's us. You can go to my website and buy whatever you want. Oh heck, I'll ship that paint to you for free if you want. You don't got to go to somebody else and get it. I'll send it to you. But, I'm telling you right now. If you decide you don't want to mind your business when the new stuff comes out, I'll take all your stuff and I'll stick it outside in direct sunlight and then you'll watch that screen eat right through your screen. I mean, if you basically want to go a little on that, I can do a demonstration right now. I can take your screen pen out there in direct sunlight and see what happens. But, no need to do any of that. All right, so from there on in, and not just with Mr. Crow, but any other company, any other company. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say this right now. The 1100 Lumen Challenge, I challenge any company to do it. Any company to do it. Now, people sit there, oh, you're arrogant, so and so and so. Hey, look, let me tell you something. I'm not arrogant. The bottom line is, I'm good at what I do. And if I'm good at what I do, I'm going to show it. I'm going to appreciate it and I'm going to celebrate it. Because it took me years to get here and I got a right to. So I had that right to basically the hard work, the time, the sweat, the, t the things I had to do and what I had to go through to get here. It was an easy walk. It was an extremely hard walk. A few times the stress put me in the hospital a couple of times. So it takes a long time to be able to get a black screen to produce, to do that, to do what you're watching right now. A lot of hard work. So if I want to celebrate and dance for a little bit, I got that right. I worked for it. So, these big companies that want to send me little emails about bottom line, about this, that, and the other, well, guess what? If you want to basically challenge my technology, here's the deal. You can post your video at the bottom of the 1100 challenge. I like to see it. I don't want to see any 4K projectors, no 1080p, no 4000, no 5000. Get yourself a 1100 lumen projector. Heck, buy it off eBay. It'll cost you 50 bucks. That's what it cost me. And do the exact same demonstration. Because sooner or later, once that technology is finished, once we incorporate it into a screen paint, we're going to have our own fixed frame screens. We're going to have our own motorized projection screens. And we're going to have a price that everybody can afford. No $3,000, no $4,000, $5,000 projection screens. You don't have to worry about if your lights are on or if your lights are this, that, and the other. None of that crap. You don't have to buy an expensive projector, no 4K, none of that. You can buy what you like. No knockoffs now. Don't take that out of free content. But you know what I'm talking about. That's the whole thing. $4,000 for a projection screen. It's freaking outrageous. $5,000 for a screen. It's not even ultra short though compatible. What the freak? So, you can't even take it outside and play with it. But once the new, once we, start, once we start next year, and we start working on the grindstone to basically perfecting this stuff, yeah. And think about it. The stuff we have now, they can't even touch right now. And it's true. They can't even touch the technology we're designing now. So next year we bring out that new stuff. That's the end of it. I don't see why someone can't have a, a professional screen in their home. They got to spend all this money for a professional screen. Or get cheated out by these cheap mixes out here on the market that don't do their demonstrations correctly. And they, they sell people things that, they're, that, they, that their screens can't do. Because they want to cut corners and make the screen look good. Yeah. Freaking uh, elite screen makes me look bad with that fake. I'm sorry, but it's true. That ambient light rejection technology. Come on, man. Are you freaking kidding me? Whew. I'm sorry, but I'm just saying it gets that way, man. Here we go. Screen slowly drying. Look at it. Still bright red. It'll get, it'll get brighter than that. It's still wet. The screen is still soaking wet. All right, people, 
Look on the bright side. You don't have to worry about me ever selling out because eventually some company's going to come up to me. They're going to ask me, hey, is there any chance we can... Yeah, nope. I get more fun at the end of the day of blowing your stuff out of the water. So, uh, yeah. All right. I got to go order some stuff. Um, I got to start working on that formula for next year. Um, you're not going to see too many videos of that, just to let you know. You might see a few videos in direct sunlight. If you're going to be working on, because I do like doing those videos right there in direct sunlight. And that black technology, we're going to be advancing that too. So that's going to have some interesting technology. They will not be sharing that mind. I said the nickname Invisible or amb the Invisible Ambulant Rejection Time is 12. It's not the name. It's just a, a, just a code name for it, our project name. You know what I mean? We might call it Project Sun Killer. You know, we might call it something crazy for the time being. But it's not going to share 12. It's not going to have 12 technology. It's going to be beyond 12. We, we, beyond 12. As you can see right now, the technology we have now is uh, it's good. It's very good for what it can do for in this decade in time. And it's not expensive. Watch me blow out a $5,000 projection screen on the screen paint that would cost you $187. $5,000, $187. Think about that. So if it costs you $5,000 for a 100-inch screen, what do you think it would probably cost you for a 135-inch screen? I mean, you can paint anything you want. Go over to eBay, go buy yourself one of them cheap $68 motorized projection screens. I got a black screen up there that's motorized. It's freaking beautiful. Go get one of them. Go get a couple of sheets of styrofoam. Whatever you want to paint it on. Just paint it. My screen in the kitchen is made out of cardboard and contact paper. All right, I got to go eat. And I got packages coming today. I don't know what's coming today. I know it's more lead lights. Oh, my goodness, more lead lights. So, yeah, if you saw the video demonstration yesterday when I was walking through the house at with the lights out, which I really do lights out demonstrations, and the entire place was lit up in lead lights, it's going to get crazier because I ordered more lead lights. It's still, I'm still not done yet. I'm still not done yet. I'm not going to do too much where it's going to be like, man, like walking through freaking the Wizard of Oz. You know what I mean? When the house finally landed on the yellow brick road. Not on that level, but it's going to be pretty cool. My next thing I'm doing is my staircase. So, Staircase, I want to put the tracers so they go up like this. Do, do, do they follow themselves up the stairs? That I would definitely want to do. That's going to be freaking cool. That is going to be freaking cool. I definitely want to do that one. Yeah, I would like to do that one. I might do the outside too. I'm going to do my outside deck and, and tracers. The ones that drop like the raindrops. But I want it synchronized because they said I have to bring in a machine for that, like some kind of program machine. So as the light goes through, when it hits each raindrop, it drops when the light hits it. Yeah, I'll explain it to you later when I, when I get a chance to show it to you. It's a little, a little bit crazy. All right. Um, with that being said, I'm going to get out of here real quick. Hope you enjoyed the demonstration. Uh, Crow, don't take it personally. Like I said, this is, this is how side-by-side -side demonstrations are supposed to be done. You know, this is the way it's done. All right? So, you know, that's basically about it. Now, the other companies out there, keep in mind, it's not your technology, side-by-side -side demonstration. All fairs and love and war. All right, gotta go. Thank you all and God bless.